Hello, this webinar is titled Francis Scott Key, A Quick Study on His Life and Faith, and it's a part of the multiple part series on the Star Spangled Banner. Well, Francis Scott Key was born on August 1, 1779 in Western Maryland. His family had wealth, and when Francis was 10 years old, his parents sent him to grammar school in Annapolis. After graduating at age 17, he began to study law in Annapolis while working with his uncle's law firm. By 1805, age 26, he had a well-established law practice of his own in Georgetown. By 1814, age 35, he had appeared many times before the Supreme Court and had been appointed the United States District Attorney. He was deeply committed to his faith. At one time in his life, he almost gave up his law practice to enter the ministry. Instead, he resolved to continue in law as his calling, while also being more involved in a local church. He expanded his impact by serving on the board of the American Bible Society and the American Sunday School Union. Because of his religious beliefs, Key was strongly opposed to the War of 1812. However, due to his deep love for his country, he did serve for a brief time in Georgetown's Light Field Artillery Unit in 1813. Then, on September of 1814, he watched the British bombardment of Fort McHenry from a British ship. He had gone out there for a prisoner exchange and was kept there until the bombardment of Baltimore was over, and we shared this in one of the other star-spangled webinars in this series. He wrote the poem Anthem on the morning of September 14th, the defense of Fort McHenry. He worked on it a few days and finished it September 16th, which later was named the Star-Spangled Banner and was set to music. There's actually four stanzas to the anthem, and the first stanza is our national anthem, but the fourth stanza is deep with meaning. We look at the middle of this fourth stanza, we see these words, Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must, for our cause it is just, and this be our motto, and God is our trust. Well, these are some deeply thoughtful words that not only expressed key sentiments, but the sentiments of his countrymen. Let's take a quick look at Francis Scott Key's faith. Here's a poem that he had written earlier, a poem for praising and pardoning grace. Lord, with glowing heart I praise thee, for the bliss thy love bestows, for the pardoning grace that saves me, and the peace that from it flows. Help, O God, my weak endeavor, this dull soul to rapture raise, Thou must light the flame, or never can my love be warm to praise. This poem reflects his deep sentiments and his deep and rich faith. On serving God and being an example, Francis Scott Key provided these remarks on February 22, 1812, uh, the first year that the War of 1812 was underway. The patriot who feels himself in the service of God, who acknowledges him in all his ways, as the promise of almighty direction, and will find his word in his greatest darkness, a lantern to his feet, and a lamp unto his path. He will therefore seek to establish for his country in the eyes of the world such a character as shall make her not unworthy of the name of a Christian nation. And so those are some of his deep thoughts on faith. Well, after the war, he continued to live out his faith and be an example. He was well liked by his friends and was active in civil affairs and society. On January 11, 1843, while visiting his daughter in Baltimore, Key died of pleurisy, which is a type of pneumonia. He was 64 years old. Well, as we wrap up, these characteristics stand out for me about Francis Scott Key. He's a man of character, of faith, of service, and calling. Might we follow his example in our generation? My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.